Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Today's episode is brought to you by Always a Bridesmaid for Hire, a book by yours truly, Jen Glantz. People always want to know, Jen, what is it like to be a hired bridesmaid for strangers and look? I've been doing this for the past five years. I'm the world's first and only person to do this. And after a while, I had so many crazy stories to share that I decided to write a book called Always a Bridesmaid for Hire, where you can learn about what it's like to start this weird, funky business, walk down the aisle for strangers as their bridesmaid, and also about my own personal quest for love during it all. You can find the book right now on Amazon, Always a Bridesmaid for Hire. The paperback version is called When You Least Expect It. Yes, same book, different title. That's show business, baby. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz. What's up? What is going on? Happy whatever day it is that you're listening to this podcast. May it be the best day of your week, even if it is a Monday. Why in the world can't Mondays be good? I feel like on Sunday night, we all go to sleep feeling really, really scared and really unhappy. But the truth is, Monday is one of the best days of the week. You want to know why? Because it's not the day that should have the most pressure. It's honestly the day where you should just sort of ease into everything. That's my motto of the morning. I wake up, I slowly get out of bed, I find the brightest outfit I can, and I ease into the day because you know what? By Wednesday, the pressure is on to finish that to-do list. So take that mindset of Monday being pure madness and toss it in the trash can. What if you woke up this Monday and said, you know what? Monday is the new Friday. Okay, if I haven't convinced you to change the days of the week in your mind. I'm working on it. I'm hoping that will change. But this week today on this podcast, we're at a challenge week right here, right now. I'm giving you a brand new challenge to tackle, to take on. No guests this week, just me and you, eye to eye, not really, more like voice to ears, getting you through this challenge. So I've had guests on the show before talking to you about your money, but the truth is maybe all you do is listen to the guests, you nod at their advice, you show that you're going to make an effort, but then you don't do anything. The other week I was hanging out with two of my friends and they were talking about how a huge goal of this year is to just organize their finances and talk about money more. But honestly, every time we all go to do that, we get so overwhelmed You start looking at your credit card bills and maybe you start looking at the lack of cash in your 401k and you just panic. You panic so hard, so much, so loud, so bright that you just shut down the computer and you buy yourself an expensive coffee. Not judging you on the coffee purchase, by the way. I just spent $5 on a coffee this morning because I desperately needed something to keep me awake. So I never think that anything you buy is a waste of time. But here's what I will judge you on. I will judge you on the fact that you run away from your finances. They're yours. And nobody out there is going to care about them as much as you care about them unless you're in trouble. Unless those creditors are knocking on your door and collections is calling you and leaving you voicemails and the IRS, I don't even want to talk about them right now. So here's the thing. This week's challenge is a little bit personal. You don't have to tell anybody in the world you are doing this. But I want you to take control of your money. And it's simple. All I want you to do is organize your finances and own them. Before you reach out for information and help on your finances and help you strategize and plan and and do all of those things, I want you to be able to answer the basic questions about your cash flow. How many bank accounts do you have and what is inside of them? How many charges come into your bank account? How many recurring things do you pay out of those accounts? 
For example, every single month, the IRS takes X amount of dollars from my savings account directly out of it. What about you? What's coming in and out of your bank accounts on a monthly basis? Two, how about your credit cards? I know that's a scary word, but can you take your credit card statements, print them out for the last month or two months of all of your credit cards, and can you look at each and every purchase in the eye and maybe say to yourself, did I need this? Or next month, what could I do instead of getting a coffee every single day because that will cost you over $300? What could you do instead? Maybe that's a coffee every other day. Or maybe that's you get that freaking coffee every day, but you don't get something else because your credit card bill is way too high and you can't pay it. Analyze your credit card statements. Analyze how much you usually spend on a normal month. Not talking about the holiday months. If you look at December statement, you might just fall over and faint. I'm talking about a normal January month, a February month, where maybe you didn't have a big life-changing event going on or a bunch of gifts to shop for. Then, how about your other assets? your retirement funds, if you have them, and if you don't, don't beat yourself up over it. A lot of people do not have retirement funds. But if you do, look at that, look at the money. Look at how it's invested. And if you're not sure what that means, just write down where your money is in. Is it in a 401k? Is it in an IRA? Just write that down and then look at any information surrounding that, meaning what's the investment like? What is the money? What's happening to the money? How much interest is it earning? Next, do you have any investments? Are you investing in mutual funds or stocks? And if you are not, that's okay too. But if you are, understand how much money you're putting into your investments and understand how much it's making so that when you do sit down and show somebody, you have some education on what's happening to your money. You know, a lot of people are told to open up these accounts and have direct deposits go in them every month, but they have no idea that the person managing those funds is taking a, a percentage. For example, if your money is in TD Ameritrade or somewhere like that, they are taking some money from you. And that might be okay, but you should know that. How about the D word, debt? I know you don't want to talk about this, but how much in student loan debt do you have and how much in credit card debt do you have and what's the game plan to pay it off? And if there's no game plan, fine. But if there is, how much are you paying every month? Write all of this down. Open up an Excel spreadsheet, a Google Doc, and just map this out. Look at it. Own it. It's yours. Now, the good news is there's tons of free resources to help you. There's tons of free little changes you could make to earn thousands and thousands of dollars a month. But first, you have to know your finances. I did this. I did this recently. And one of the biggest things I realized is that almost every dollar to my name was sitting in a bank account making absolutely no interest. Like I'm talking about dollars a year in interest. And after I did this inventory, I realized there's plenty of other banks I could put my money in that rather than making dollars in interest, I could make thousands of dollars in interest a year. So I actually did this change last year at the start of last year. And by the end of last year, I went from making probably $15 in interest to making a couple of thousands of dollars in interest just by moving my money to a bank that had a higher interest. There's lots of banks out there that have 1.7%, 1.8% interest. So that's one quick fix I made that helped me increase my cash flow, increase how much money I was getting. Another big change I'm, I'm in the process of making with my finances is figuring out where to put my money, meaning right now I am so comfortable just putting my dollars in savings. So every month after I pay my bills and I budget for everything, I put any leftover cash in my savings account. But that's the that's the line. I am such not an investor. I don't really have a retirement account. Things like that scare me and that's a huge roadblock that I'm working on. But I didn't realize any of this until I took inventory. So that is my challenge for you is just to own everything 
something and organize it. Pretend like you are about to set, send someone or give someone these documents that they can review your finances. And I know that's a scary thought, but I'm not even asking you to show this to anyone. I'm just asking you to organize it all. How about this? Maybe you're listening to this on a Friday. So you're going to spend two hours on Saturday tomorrow taking inventory. Maybe you're listening to this on a Monday and you're thinking, Jen, you're giving me something humongous like this to do on a Monday. So here's the thing. Find two hours in your week this week to do this. That's all it will take. You know what? It'll probably take you 30 minutes and you're going to look at this and say, now I have extra time blocked off to live my life and buy that coffee. But I'm asking you to take this money challenge. Take control of your finances. Don't just make this a goal for later in the year. Make it a right now thing. And as you're doing it and you have questions and you want those free resources and you want to know all these banks to go to and places to go to with your money, come hang out with us in the secret. You're not getting any younger Facebook group. We're always talking about how to manage your money, how to make smart moves, and how to do it without spending a lot of cash for help. I'll see you there. And before you go, feel free to leave us a review on iTunes. Your reviews matter so much to us and are so greatly appreciated. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.